And you're tremendously confident. Am I? Yeah, you seem to be. Yeah, people tell me that. Yeah. No, and I think you'd have to be to do this kind of work. Yeah, I guess so, in a sense. Huh, I never really thought of it like that. Yeah, I guess I am confident. All right, Mason. Yo. Mason, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? Um, well, I was, uh, I was born in Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, I think right around three or four, I went to, we moved to Indiana. So I grew up in the Midwest, so Indiana. Born in Memphis, but grew up in Indiana. Got it. And what was your childhood like? You had both your folks? Yeah, well, up until about seven years old, my uh, biological father passed away. Uh, unfortunately, it happens. He got in a, uh, he got in a car accident and uh, uh, he passed away. And uh, um, I think from there, there was some mixed emotions within the household with my mom. She's, 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 she's an awesome person. I don't have anything bad to say about her, but we didn't get along at that point. So we, we had a falling out. So I was actually, uh, I got adopted basically by my really good friend's parents. So, so your mom actually lost you. In a sense, I guess, absolutely. I have more of a bond with, um, with my adopted family than I ever did with my biological mom. But your mom lost you, I mean, there was no drugs involved or anything like that? As far as myself? With your mom. Oh, no, I, no with her? No, that's what I'm saying, absolutely not. She, I, don't, I don't know what it was. She, uh, she's not an alcoholic, she's not a drug user, she's just, uh, what's the best way? <laughs> not everyone's <laughs> cut out to be a parent. Yeah, right, or sits, or like, just like that. What, what did my older brother, Spencer, say? Uh, she reminded you of like that really the stern, southern, you know, don't put up with no crap, yes ma'am, no ma'am kind of girl. So it's, you know, it's generation gaps, bro. But your childhood with the family that took My childhood was great. Yeah. It, with, with, besides that little, that, that, that little messing up, I mean, I, I had a great childhood. I grew up in New Palestine, Indiana, a great little suburb of Indianapolis, um, great school system. I had great friends, great neighborhood. I mean, it, I, I have no hangups about my childhood. It was, it was actually really great. That's great. And uh, you, went to, you went through high school? Yeah, I went, went all the way through high school in the same town. So I started in preschool in, in New Palestine and I graduated from, well, technically I graduated from Greenfield Central because I got in a little bit of trouble towards the end of high school. I got in like a little fight, but because I was 18 and I think they were gonna try to expel me, I just, I, I dropped out. But you could, when you're 18, there was something where you could drop out, but you were allowed to enroll in any other school in the county because I was an adult. So I just dropped out of New Pal before they could expel me and just enrolled in Greenfield. And I, I graduated Greenfield. I walked down the aisle and, and, blue, and blue and gold, baby. What kind, what kind of kid were you in high school? Uh, more of like a skater, alternative punk, uh, rock and roll skater guy. Yeah, 100%. And then uh, after, after school, you did what? Let's see here, after high school, a lot of partying, a lot of rock and roll. I uh, uh, got into rock and roll bands big time um, uh, and a lot of partying, a lot of my, uh, I, I didn't go to a university at all, but a lot of my friends that I grew up, you know, went to like Purdue, IU, Ball State, ISU. Um, and so I, I spent a lot of time after high school playing beer pong <laughs> and hanging out at fraternity houses and all that kind of stuff. So it was, again, after high school, it was just, it was just living one day at a time, just having a really good time, so. Up until about 21 is when I got into dancing, per se. How, how did you get started with that? Well, I actually tried to get started before that. I had a fake ID that I had found. It didn't really even look like me, but uh, I just, I wanted to get out there and, and, and dance. And so I went to go try out at this, uh, it was a gay bar downtown called The, uh, the Unicorn. And uh, I, first off, I would just like to say, I appreciate all walks of life and I love everybody in a sense on your lifestyle choices. But you have to understand, at this time, I'm a 19 year old kid that grew up in little Indiana and I remember walking into that gay bar and the first thing I saw was like, like when you walk into the right, there was a big shower and this guy was just butt ass naked, just going to town with the shower on him and there was gay porn on the TV. It, 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 it just took, it took me by surprise, you know. So I, I, I didn't get the, I didn't get the courage. Are, are you gay? Mustered up. Uh, I don't think so. The reason why I say that is I'm not attracted to the male figure, but um, in my, I, I think transsexuals and TSs are very beautiful. 
So uh, uh, some, some are some are incredibly beautiful. Incredibly beautiful. So like there's a there's a fine line there. You have some people tell you that hey man you're bisexual because you know they have some they call it a girl cock or whatever you want to call it. Again, I'm not trying to sound, but you either are on one side or the other. And I don't. If you want to call me bisexual, great, I'll take it. If you want to call me straight, <laughs> I'll take it. I, I can give a shit about labels. All right, you know? So back to the club. You walk into this club. Yeah, this took me. It just it, it took me off guard. It 100% took me off guard, and it, it, not to say it did, it's kind of scared me out. I, I took a break, and I, I just decided it wasn't, and then it wasn't until after I was 21, um, I had found out there was this place called PT's, which was a, a, a strip club, a titty bar in Indiana, um, on the east side of Indianapolis off Pendleton Pike, and uh, on Saturday nights, they would do a male review, and uh, that's where I got my start stripping. I went and tried out there. Uh, the guy who got me my start was running the crew. His name was Tommy. He was a, a, a cool guy, cool uh, uh, crew of guys. I remember when I first came in, and this was more my vibe. I mean, it, was, it wasn't so explicit right away, you know, just, you know, it gets to that eventually, but you know, but when I first walked in here, it's just a really nice chill vibe, you know, cause it's a strip, it's a, it's a strip club. There's all kind of mixes of people in there. And then he goes, if you want to come for a Saturday and just watch how we do our show, um, you, you can come watch and get some ideas. And I said, yeah, no problem. And I watched, I went that Saturday night and I watched about one song. And I said, bro, put me up. He goes, are you sure? He, I said, bro, put me up. I had already had my chaps and my cowboy hat, like I'd, I'd come ready to go. And I just, just fed off the energy. In that, in that situation, you'd be on a circle stage and they just had the chairs around the circle, you know? So like they would, <laughs> you know that funny strip club voice where it's, uh, and to the center stage, we have Porsche. And then to, and for the ladies in the back. And at that time, I, I wasn't Mason yet. They, I had, they come up with something off the spot. I was going by Sebastian. So he would go, and for the ladies in the back, we have Sebastian. I always thought that was fucking hilarious. So uh, I got into that and then um, I wanted to do it more because that was only on Saturday nights. So I already have gotten, I was eased into it more and kind of got a, a feel on how to work the clubs and stuff. And so then I went back to that unicorn place that was kind of a little too much too quick. And I, I eased right into that. And, and I, I, was, I, was stripping at, um, I was stripping at PT's on Saturday nights and I was stripping at the unicorn Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And every, and every other Sunday, I take a Sunday off just to take it off. But that was a really, that was a really fun place to work. They so, both work. so your personality kind of made this easy for you. 100%. Like some people, like, like I could never ever do this. Yeah, we, and, and I think those people that say that maybe put too much uh, capital in their actual moves and stuff rather than your personality. Hmm. You know, if you could just be open and just start talking to people, you'd be amazed how many people are just happy to have some, I mean, you've got a lot of men that go to strip clubs are just happy to have some hot chicks on his lap talking to them. You know, there's plenty of that going with there. I, 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 uh, I had plenty of guys who would come in there and they'd pay me just to sit there and, and talk to them. Some of them would pay me to, to like be mean to them, you know. I always felt kind of weird about that because it was funny. But this one guy would come in and want me to degrade him. Call him a faggot and a gay. Yeah, no, right? Weird, right? But he would, he, he would, he would literally, he would be in the corner and I would be doing it, being, saying degrading things. I just, I don't really want to repeat because I don't. It's, it's, you know what I'm saying? But at that time, this is a fucking true story, man. He would pay me to degrade him. And like, I'd be sitting there degrading him. And he just, he, he always had a stack of 20s. And he would just sit there 20, wait, you know, five minutes, 20, wait five minutes. And I knew when he was there, it was great. And girls will understand this. Girls know when they're like, when they see that person, I don't have to work tonight. I'm going to go up on stage once and I'm going to go back there and hang out with him for four hours or however long he's here. I'm going to make five, six hundred dollars, you know, and then, and, and and that's good money. If you can pull down 500 a day, I don't care who you are, that's good money. <laughs> and so that led to what? You eventually moved to, to Vegas? Kind of, my, uh, so back to where like, um, uh, Have you been married? No, no married, no kids. Uh, back to where, well, I was- How old are you? I was adopted. Um, I will be, uh, I'll be 37 next month. So September, I'll be 37, so. And you're tremendously confident. Am I? Yeah, you seem to be. Yeah, people tell me that. Yeah. No, and I think you'd have to be to do this kind of work. Yeah, I guess so, in a sense. Huh, I never really thought of it like that. Yeah, I guess I am confident. But my, that family that, had, that adopted me, you know, they're always very supportive of, of, of everything I've done. And uh, Steve, 
which is my adopted father, um, was telling me about this uh, competition. Um, it's about an hour south of Chicago in Roseland, Indiana. It's technically in Indiana, but it's an hour, it's, no one's heard of Roseland, Indiana. So it's a place that's an hour south of Chicago in Indiana called uh, the Ponderosa Sun Club, and they do a thing called NAP, which is Nudes uh, Poppin', and it's a uh, it's mainly catered towards the women. And like, you know when you like, you go to strip clubs and you'll see like the billboard of like the featured dancers? So this is, this is like the kind of competitions those girls go to compete for those titles. So they can say that they're this or they're that and they're this. And again, you know, it's ma mainly you know, catered towards the women, but they have a, a men's thing, a competition. So I entered it um, and my whole family showed up. I'm butt ass naked competing. I got all four of my brothers, my dad, they're all cheering me on. You know, I get called up. Um, I, I won some awards. How is it to be naked in front of your family? I didn't care. See, at that point, I'd already been stripping. I didn't care. It, it, it got, I was, I got really comfortable real quick. It didn't bother me. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I know, I'm not King Kong Bundy or nothing, but I'm also not short either. So, I mean, I'll let it hang. I'm not ashamed. <laughs> But yeah, I, and uh, uh, I, that's, thing, that's something that happened every year. But from that first year when I won, was it opened up a lot of doors for me because my dad at the time was already coming out here. He had bought a hot springs and they're in California and he was already setting up out here in Vegas. So I won that competition. I got some job offers and I came straight out here and went straight to work. So, and I haven't looked back since. And it's just been, it's been an amazing, it's been an amazing career. I mean, at this point it's a career. And, now, been, and now you're specializing in more like private Engagements, right? I've always expected. So when I when I first moved to Vegas, um, I was here for about six months before I started working for the agency that I'm with now. I don't know why I point like he's right there, but like we're, we're working for the agency that I do now. Um, I worked there's a, there's a, 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 a there used to be a bar on the strip here called Crave. It was K R A V E, and it was where Planet Hollywood and all that used to be. It's 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 long gone now, but uh, it was a gay bar. But they had it wasn't a strip club. It was just like you know you, you go to bars and they have the go go dancers. So I got started there and I got fired after, I don't know, I, I, I was in and out. They told me I was a, I got laughed at. I came out here and got laughed at. I was like, all right, I'm fuck. So then I was like, all right, there's these, this, uh, this guy at the Unicorn had told me about this other place, Piranha. So I just went to Piranha and I just, they, I love that place because they took me in and it was go-go dancing. And then, because I'm just a hustler, I consider myself a hustler and you could, you could dance for 30 minutes and take a break for 30 minutes, or you could dance for 30 minutes and go sell shots for 30 minutes. So I just did both. So I, I was just killing it. So I went to the, the gay clubs, and then uh, uh, during that time, I had been filling out online applications for the private stuff, and then I got the call back from uh, Sin City Strippers, and I've been dancing for Sin City Strippers for about about 14 years. So you're doing a private, a private engagement where you're stripping for I yeah, see, like, I, I like kind of room. rooms and stuff. It could be a, uh, like a birthday party or yeah, birthday party, bachelorette, divorce, or just a party, yeah. uh, Mother's Day parties, uh, retirement parties, um, hospice parties. And, and you'll show up like dressed like a cowboy. However they want. I got a, I got it all. I got firefighter, cowboy, cop, uh, <laughs> room service, doctor. I mean, all kinds. I've even shown up as a excuse, excuse me. I've even shown up as a uh, as a clown. I've shown up as a, I'm going to say it wrong because I don't watch the fucking show, but I think his name's Legolas from the Lord of the Rings. I've showed up as that, the bow and arrow guy, I've showed up as him. One of the most recent ones I did that I thought was fucking hilarious uh, was I showed up as Columbo. <laughs> I didn't know people, right? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> so when you go to these private parties, you'll take your clothes off. How, how naked do you get? Well, it all depends. Like, uh, just the, the regular show up is I just, I, I strip, I mean, every stripper's a little bit different, but most of the guys will strip down to uh, I strip down to like some nice briefs or some nice boxer briefs, like some nice, you know, Armani or Calvin Klein, or just a nice, a nice name brand that people can recognize. Um, and then uh, you can usually when you get hired for these things, um, it's always usually a surprise for like the birthday person or the, the, the person who it's for. So you always meet with like a friend or two before. They either come down in the lobby and meet you, or you meet them out in the hallway to go over things, collect the walk-in fee, all that good stuff. Um, and you just and then you'll try to sell it to them there. You'll say for an extra da 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 we'll go fully nude. And we call the fully nude show Fire and Ice. So uh, uh, sometimes they go for it and it's funny because sometimes they don't. And then you'll, you'll be doing such a good job in the party, they'll run up to you and slide you the money and go, yeah, we want it, we want it, you know? So it just depends what they want. Some girls want to have a wild fun time and some girls literally just want to be teased and just laugh. I mean, all walks of life, you know? What, what is it that women want? Like you go to a strip club for men and the guys just want the- Women, I know for a fact. 
from years of doing this. I've done thousands of these fucking parties, thousands. I, you gotta, you know, I've been doing private parties every weekend, every weekend since 2007. I've barely taken very few weekends off is when I go on vacation. You, you and, probably have an interesting perspective on what women yes, and respond I, to. Yeah, and they what women respond to in my situation is they want to have fun. And when I mean want to have fun, it doesn't, they're not, their pussies aren't sopping wet and they're not lining up to suck my cock, although that has happened. But for the most part, they just, the person that they're doing it for, they want them to feel embarrassed. They all laugh. They all get to throw the ones at you. And then we have a set of moves that we do where we pick them up and we flip them around and we do all kinds of stuff. We, you know, it's just, you, you, you make them laugh and you make them feel like they're having like a good time. And if you do that, you've done your job. It's probably a much healthier attitude towards the male female interaction than what men have with with female prostitutes. So that's what I tell girls too, because girls sometimes will they'll, they'll ask me what I make, and uh, which I'm not going to discuss here. But they'll ask me what I make sometimes, and um, I'll give them a ballpark, and they'll 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 their immediate reaction is always is always ah oh, I, I need to be a stripper, you know. And I tell them with just what you just said. I say you know there's a big difference between um, what I'm doing and what you have to do. Like I'm coming in here, dancing for a bunch of hot chicks, getting paid, looking cool laughing, having a good time, flipping you guys around. I mean, there's not much, like I tell them the same thing, it's not like you girls are lined up to suck my cock. I mean, that very rarely happens, man. And when, when that happens, you just, you're getting that kind of group of girls. And, and you don't walk out of the room feeling used and degraded. No, oh, fuck no. I walk in feeling like a stud. Right. I walk, I'm sorry, I, I walk in feeling like a stud and I walk out feeling like a stud. Whereas a woman very often might feel that. Yeah, and I tell them that because when you when the girls, and the girls make about triple what I make. I mean, girls do hella good, but they, they, they're coming here and you're, you're, you, they want to see your pussy. They want to see your ass. They want to see your titties. They want to touch you. You're going to be grinding on guys. You're going to be grinding on guys' boners. I mean, I know as weird as that sounds, that's what you're doing. So I don't want to call it degrading because to me, if a girl's comfortable with her life choices and she wants to have fun, it's not degrading. But if you feel like it's bothering you, you shouldn't do it. Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah, it, it takes a very th thick skin for, thick, or, for a woman. Uh, it depends how you look at it. Again, maybe thick skin for someone who shouldn't be in the business in the first place, but there's girls out there who have no business being in relationships, just like there's some guys that don't, and they like to have fun. And you can and you can totally tell that some in, in, a, in a in a positive sense being degraded to them a little bit is a turn on. It's I mean I've just seen so much of it, man. Yeah. I just I've seen so much of the attitude and the energy. I just I know what I'm talking about. The scenario that you were describing at that gay club in Indiana, where the guy wanted to be degraded. Yeah, he was paying you to. to There's a real and, 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 with, and, with with women. You never find that, do you? Women to pay. Oh, oh yeah, right. Like women want to pay me to be degraded. No. Absolutely not. Women pay me to come in and make sure I let them know that I would not be here if it wasn't for you girls. And this party's about you. It's not about me. So when you hire me, I'm going to make sure I do the best possible job that I can to make sure you and your friend have a great time or yeah. friends. See, with women, it's just about having a good time. Yeah, I come in. I got a whatever outfit you want. The most popular one lately has been cowboy and firefighter. Um, I have a music player that has disco lights on the Bluetooth and everything. We set up the room and it's a fucking, we run it like a club. So, so doing this kind of work for you, and you've done it for... A long time, almost fifteen years. You don't, you don't get, you know, depressed or feeling like. <laughs> <laughs> Quite the opposite. There's, I know we're covered up now, but there's plenty of times. Like I just did a party. It was two. It was either last Saturday. They all run together. It was either last Saturday or the Saturday. No, it was two Saturdays ago. One hundred percent. And it was a eleven a.m. party, and it was for a twenty first birthday, and the moms hired me. Uh, and it was at the Tower Suites, which those of you who don't know what it is, it's the Encore, has the Encore, but then there's also the Encore Tower Suites, which is just another bomb side of the Encore, and they had the two-story suite. So, uh, I, I, you know, you go into these, it's like, it does the quite opposite. I get to go to the coolest, I've been to the $30,000 a night uh, suite at Caesars Palace. I've been to the Presidential Suite at the Mandalay Bay. I've been to all of them. I remember walking down the hallway when I first, uh, I was at the Palazzo Venetian, walking through the hallway to one of my first big parties there, passing Leonardo DiCaprio and some of his homies in the in the in the uh, in the hallway. I remember being at the Aria, and I'm like a, a big fan of The Office. I ran right into Oscar, the guy in the office, and him and Kevin were there. And he's like, "Come have a beer," and I was like, oh, "I gotta go." It was cool to say to him, like, "But I gotta go strip." And I pointed over, and there's a hot blonde waving at me. He's like, "Go get him," you know. So it's just the it's it's the every little seems like experience is just uh, it's uplifting, but. There's always exception to that. You can be not degraded, but you'll go into parties where they shouldn't have gotten a stripper, where they're too freaked out. 
or they don't want to be touched or they don't want to do this and do that. And it's like, well, if you're going to have that kind of attitude, I mean, you just, you're probably better off doing something else for the girl rather than getting a stripper, as politely put. We get a call at the office and are you aware what a dominatrix is? Yes. So this is when I first moved here. So a dominatrix calls us and she's looking for a male stripper. And she's looking for a male stripper because a client of hers, and this was here at Mandalay Bay. This was at one of the nice presidential suites at Mandalay Bay. She had a client that wasn't, I mean, obviously no names. I don't even think I remember the guy's name anyway. She had a client that was extremely wealthy but liked to dress like a woman and be degraded. And he wanted to have a mock bachelorette party. You follow me kind of? Mm -hmm. So he calls his dominatrix to set it all up. So he, the dominatrix calls our company and she has a bunch of her friends there just to act like the girls in the group, you know? So of course I take it, I'm gonna go knock this out. I'll never forget walking in that suite and I'm not knowing what kind of, you know, uh, who you're gonna see. And this, this, this gentleman that liked the cross dress, which is, Totally fine. I remember him looking just like Princess Diana. I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that, like the, the hair, the, the pearls, the nice, like sh she was businessed out. And they, I remember I was told to kiss the ring and be really proper. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm a paid actor. I've always, I'm a hustler and a paid actor. This is your party. As, as long as I'm not doing anything in my mind that I feel like I don't wanna do, which I will openly say in two seconds, uh, I'm good with it. So I'll kiss a ring, let's go. So, starts with that, I go on, do my whole thing, and they had this, this table, kitchen table kinda, with the chairs on the sides and like the big chairs on the end, you know? And I remember up top was the, the mirrored ceiling, and he was in the nice, she, sorry, she was in the nice big chair on the end, and all her friends were there, and I remember dancing on the table, right? That kid dancing. They paid for the full nude show, I'm fully nude, and I'll never forget as a party progressed on, I'm up on the table, and I notice the party's kind of splitting up a little bit, and I look over to the right, and this guy's just getting plowed in the ass by a big black strap on from the dominatrix. And I'm dancing on this table, and I'm looking over at this, this, uh, this, this person getting plowed by a, a big black strap on by a dominatrix. And I had, I had been in Vegas maybe a year, and I, I thought like the Wizard of Oz, like you're not in Kansas, anymore, like I'm, I'm not in Indiana anymore, you know? And uh, that's, that was a 100% true story and it's all about perspective and that's how I perceived it. People are interesting, aren't they? There's all walks of life out there. I've, I've done parties with, uh, one of another favorite parties I've done was, uh, it's happened on two occasions, uh, Persian women, fucking beautiful women. Persians are beautiful. And I don't know if they're suppressed by their culture, but it seems like when they just get together with no guys, they get wild, man. They're hot and they're beautiful. You know, they're the, I, I won't, I'll really say they're the most beautiful women. But anyway, with that said, I'm doing these Persian parties and this one in particular uh, turns into a damn near orgy. Uh, I, I remember being butt ass naked and girls, they were, they were wrapping $100 bills around my cock and jerking me off with it. And they were naked and having a good time. And I remember laying there basically borderline getting ravaged and raged by all these hot Persian women. And I think I made eight or $900 that night. It's just ridiculous. I had another one that a few months later, not the $100 bills, but Persians, and it was another wild party. Uh, I mean, I could go on for days, man. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's just another, and who knows what I'll see this weekend. I mean, I never know what the fuck I'm walking into, but I know that I'm gonna be life of the party, and I know that you're gonna have a great time if you hire me, so. All right, Mason. Thank you so much for sharing your stories. No, 100%, I'd like to come back anytime because I, I feel like we, uh, we barely scraped the surface because I, I literally have, I'm in the middle of doing a book, but I literally have, I, I, I have so many more stories like that. Like that, uh, real quick, I'll end on this. The time where I did a gay, uh, it, was, it was a bunch of gay guys, and they had a, a girlfriend and they wanted to get a, a stripper for their girlfriend. It was her birthday party. And they had it catered and everything. And I remember it being all guys and just her. So I'm dancing, she was a hot girl too. And uh, they're all like going, pull her tits out, you know, pull her tits. And they're, we're, we're circled while I'm dancing. And she's in a chair and we're just circled. And they're going, they're drinking, partying. And, and I saw, I, was, I look at her, I always ask, like, is it okay? And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's hot. She pulls my, I'm like, oh man. So like I start, I start getting hard, you know? And uh, uh, they're like, pull his cock, they're starting, you know, they're yelling, pull his cock out. 
I was like, I just did the whole look like, you know, if you, and she pulled it out and they're going, suck it. And I was like, and before I know it, this girl is just blowing me, right? She's just going at it, it feels so good. And I'm gonna come, bro. Like, it's so good, I'm actually gonna fucking blow my load. And I have all these guys around. And when I came, I came all over her tits and I got a standing ovation from everybody in that fucking room. What, what, what do you like uh, about Vegas? You, you love it here? Love it, I'll be here. Um, I got a great support system here. Um, I have a great career here. Um, uh, I have uh, family, friends. Uh, I just, I, I'm, I am, I'm here. I live on the Strip. I've lived on the Strip for about six or seven years now. Um, I, I'm not married, no kids. Uh, right now I'm currently taking care of, a, a shout out to Joe. I'm taking care of my 94 year old grandpa right now. So he just turned 94 last Wednesday. So happy, uh, happy belated to Joe. That's nice of you. Yeah, no, man, it's, it's, it's the way life works. You ain't got family, you ain't got nothing. So uh, uh, I'm taking care of him. We, we're, we're, the, we're the odd couple. <laughs> I was making him breakfast. I made him breakfast and coffee this morning before I headed over here. And what's, uh, what would you say is the most important thing you've learned in your life? Uh, the universe will always give you things and it can't always decipher what's good and bad. So stay positive, always stay positive, think of positive things, be pessimistic, be positive, the glass is half full, and there's no room for negativity. I mean, if I've just gotta be That's great. about it, that's seriously, be positive, be nice to people, and uh, Charlie Murphy had a saying that I really, really like, is like, you should go out and respect everybody, man. Just respect everybody. Everyone has that saying growing up, like, you gotta earn my respect. That's, no, 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 no. Respect everybody. What you, what you allow people to earn if you want is your disrespect. And once you earn a disrespect, you don't, negative energy you just and going to being positive so that that would be it that's great 100